Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel and a new Crusader Kings 3 regional guide, as in guides before. I will focus on a region, the interesting people, the history, and some possible strategies. I mean, today we're going to be talking about the Byzantine Empire, or more correctly referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire, or just Roman Empire, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But before diving straight into the guide, I want to thank everybody that is enjoying these guides. Obviously, it's a big part of the channel, a big part of growth on the channel. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these, uh, and I will obviously continue to do these and add a few more in the future. It's just, they take a lot of time, and I'm doing other things as well, so uh, hopefully you will enjoy this one. If you do, please hit that like button. It will definitely help the channel and these guides to be seen, which will also give me more time to be able to dedicate them to them in future. So, we're going to talk a little bit about the Byzantines. Um, in, in this is 867. I will do another guide discussing them in 1066. I looked at kind of combining both into one, but then it would just be one, let's call it, rather large <laughs> Uh, guide and so we're not gonna bother with that but first we're going to talk about in general the Byzantine Empire and actually what it really should be called um, now it is a historical continuation of the Roman Empire sometimes referred to as the Eastern Roman Empire or Byzantium the term Byzantine was actually a term created after the fall of the Empire in 1453 so the the people who lived within its borders, especially in Constantinople, always referred to themselves as Romans. And the emperor was the Roman emperor, not the Byzantine emperor. So that's just something to keep in mind and something that is important if you're looking and discussing this in a historical context, whether it's now in 867, 1066, or even discussing the actual final fall in 1453. Now, the major shift within the Roman Empire actually came after Constantine I, and he reorganized the empire in the 4th century, moved the capital to Constantinople, which is obviously named after him, and then also adopted Christianity. That was a massive shift. The other shift also came a few centuries later, a move away from the more Latin focus, and that was Emperor Heraclius in the 7th century who replaced Latin with Greek, and that was definitely a Greek shift, also in terms of the church moving towards orthodoxy. Now the fall of the Byzantine Empire really began in earnest after the loss to the Seljuk Turks. Turks at Mansikert in 1071, and then obviously the decline continued until 1453. What we're looking at in 867 is a snapshot that kind of is a resurgent age for the Roman Empire. Uh, now, under Justinian, they had actually expanded and reconquered a lot of the old Roman Empire, but it really had fallen by the wayside all the way down to the 7th century when they lost a lot of territory to the rising, rising Arab a tide coming from the east and the Slavic tide coming from the north and west. Now, by the time you look at this right now, here in front of you in 867, a lot has changed and they have reconquered a lot of their former territory. So we're going to be taking a look at 867. Now, we're going to start with this man right here, uh, the Basil the First. It says Basileos or Vas... Vasilefs, as I was told, it's pronounced in Greek, as the emperor and actually the founder of the Macedonian dynasty. And it says Macedon for anybody who's giving me trouble on Imperator Rome. Well, I'm not calling it Macedon. Even in CK3, it's with a K and Macedon is the Greek pronunciation. And he really not just founded the Macedonian dynasty. He's also known as the Macedonian. He helped rebirth the Roman Empire through its golden age until 1025. Now he moved the empire from a defensive strategy to an offensive strategy and reestablished a lot of the former glory in pushing back the Slavs and the Arabs. 
The interesting thing about Basil, he was actually born a peasant. Now, um, his ethnic heritage is a little bit disputed, but many are suggesting it is Armenian, which is something you will see repeated a few times here, possibly in this guide. Now, the way he came to power, he became a groom to Theophilites, who was a relative of Emperor Michael III. He then gained a lot of wealth while in the service of Lady Danielis of Patras. But what really brought him forward was he caught attention of the emperor as both a horse tamer and a wrestler defeating a Bulgarian champion and through that became not just friends but also a bodyguard to Emperor Michael III. Now he man maneuvered himself into positions of power. Part of that was to tell Michael that Michael's uncle, who was the Caesar, different position, so don't think of it as Kaiser or Emperor in that sense. It's kind of a, the next step over. And actually, Bardas, who was the uncle, was then eventually killed. And Basil got himself promoted to that position and eventually named co-emperor at 866. He was also adopted by Michael at that time. Now, an interesting thing. Uh, Michael had then in 867, so close to right around when we are here. This is 1st of January, 867. It's a little ahistorical because all of this transpired in 867, but here in the game, it already has transpired. So bear with me. So Michael had actually found another friend who he trusted a little bit more than Basil. And Michael was not very popular. Uh, he was actually very disliked both by the nobility within the Roman Empire as well as the people and the clergy as well. So because Michael had found a new friend, a new confidant, and Basil was being pushed away, Basil conspired against Michael and actually murdered him in September of 867. Now again, we're looking here 1st of January 867 is the date in the game. Uh, I'm assuming Paradox just kind of moved everything forward just to keep it a little bit more, I don't know, stable in the game. Not quite sure, but this all really transpired about eight, nine months after the actual start date here in the game. But be that as it may, we have Basil in power. Now, there's no outcry over his usurpation of the throne because, like I said, Michael was very disliked. Now, Basil himself actually created some very good strategic alliances. One of them was with this gentleman right over here, King Louis II of Italy, who eventually became a uh, German emperor or Roman emperor through the, pape, uh, the Pope, kind of named him that. So he kind of unified the two, and with that pushed the Arab forces back from the Dalmatian coast, and specifically Ragusa. Now, Basil's life, I keep calling Basil like he's Basil faulty, but Basil's life ended in 886. So just, uh, what are we looking at here? Nine years after the start date, he died in a hunting accident where reported, reportedly he got caught also in the stirrups of his horse and was dragged for 16 miles. That's quite the distance. And because of that, uh, he, he died. And uh, kind of taking over for him, was this kid right here, Leon. Now, he is actually known as Leo in historical terms, and he was not very liked by Basil. And you can see right here is a born in purple, which means, of course, he is a child of an emperor. But the rumor has it that he was actually the son of Michael and not of Basil. And so... That's why Basil actually tried to have him murdered a few times, tried to have him blinded, but he outlived him and took over the throne. So now that we have the major Basil taken care of, what is the strategy you can do? If you want to take over as Basil, which is obviously the most powerful position you can have within the Roman Empire, well, he did a few things. I mean, one, he, f he pushed back the Arab forces, so you can work on retaking all of Cyprus, Crete, and pushing back the Abbasids here. The other one, of course, the big threat on the northern border is Bulgaria and then kind of uniting these Slavic tribes here. So that's a push. I would go for one over the other. I'd probably first go uh, and 
and move here, maybe becoming allies with, oh, I don't know, East Francia and Italy. So you can kind of hem in the Slavs here, retake a lot of this land, and then focus your attention on retaking some of the old Roman territories in North Africa, Syria, and so on. Now that we've spoken about Basil, we will look at some of the more minor and future major characters that are represented in the game. Some of them historical, some of them eh, time-wise not so quite. They're historical characters, but, you know, they're not really alive in this time. And we're going to talk about one of them here in Constantinos of Syracuse, of Syracuse, or Syracuse, and uh, Contomites. So Constantinos Contomites, who was actually a real-life person, he was a trusted general, and the Emperor Michael had sent him to Sicily to drive the Muslims out. Now, unfortunately, he actually died in 860, but we're in 867. But he's he's in the game right now, and it does represent the small foothold that the Roman Empire had in Syracuse, uh, and specifically Sicily. Sorry, Sicily. So what can you do if you are him? Well, first of all, Try to drive uh, the Muslim forces out of Sicily. That is the main goal you would have here. And then expand there and kind of become a power broker in southern Italy in hopes that your uh, emperor lord will come to aid you in that endeavor. The next character we're going to talk about here is the family is in Dyrrachian and it is the Gerontas family. This was a distinguished and leading Athenian noble family, so they actually did exist. And you're in an interesting position here because obviously you can expand within the realm south to Epirus. Now, Thomas is not a real historical character. He's in a pretty powerful position as a count especially because you could move ostensibly north to try to push the Slavs out of Dukla and then eventually move up to Ragusa and so forth. Um, the Garantas, again, they were an Athenian family that kind of settled in this area to help reestablish some of the Byzantine power there. It's an interesting start because you're right on the border. So the Bulgarians as well as these Slavic tribes if they have a hankering to try to conquer Roman land, well, you're going to take the brunt of it, but you are in a good position to help out in a war, and maybe even help declare wars against Dukla and so on. Um, but don't forget to the south, you have Epirus, which is also not a bad place to try to move into if you're looking at an internal expansion. So for the first more, let's call it major character or major family, we're looking at the Skleros family in Athens. Now this was a noble Armenian family that eventually became uh, governors of the Athenian region. Uh, they were part of the military aristocracy, which is one of the key noble ranks, if you want to think of it that way, within Roman society. So you could advance, and this is very Roman, where a lot of generals advanced to positions of power, even in ancient Rome. The same was still true in the Byzantine period, where a lot of people who established themselves as powerful generals eventually became nobility and got to positions of power within the empire. And the Scleros family is no different. Now, they rose, uh, rose to prominence predominantly in the 11th century and faded away in the 14th century. So, for about 300 years, they were a very powerful and important family within the empire. So, what would you do if you would take over as Pan Pantherius of Athens of House Scleros? Well, you've got a few options for internal expansion right away. You have Achaia here, Epirus, Thessalonica, and the Aegean Islands. And you can also help to try to reconquer Crete in the name of the Orthodox Church and the Roman Empire. So here, I'd say this is a better starting position than, say, these guys here. These guys here, now you've got prestige. This one has more prestige. This one has higher levies. But here, your room for expansion is significantly better internally, and you're in a pretty good position. Uh, your domain limit, uh, you still have a lot that you can add to it. So this would be a fun one. And maybe, 
You can build an Athenian Republic from internally and overthrow the Roman Empire and reestablish Hellenic rule as Athens in Greece. Now we move to their neighbor and their neighbor in the Aegean Islands. And here we're going to talk about Niketas of, Orf of the Orifas family. Now, Niketas is an historical character, and he was another highly respected military man. In fact, he was the most respected admiral of the entire time period. He was known as a great naval strategist. Now, he fought and defeated the Cretan Muslim rulers and helped reconquer Crete in the name of the empire. And he helped drive the Arabs from Ragusa, which is up here on the Dalmatian coast. So here a naval general rose to power. And again, this is a theme within the Roman Empire that military leaders come to power. So what can you do if you are Nikitas? Well, it's the same thing. Reconquer islands, become a naval force and, you know, reconquer um, Crete as well. And the other area you could look at is start landing up here and conquer some of these Slavic lands in the name of the empire. Now, for the first um, focus here in Asia Minor, or Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, we are going to Thrakesion and Alexandros of the house of Lacan, Lacanodracon. There we go. Now, the Lacanodracons were very famous. Specifically, he is the grandson of Michael. Michael was one of the most famous and powerful generals in the 8th century. He was actually known as a fanatical iconoclast. So not only did he fight externally versus Arabs and Bulgars, and that's how he came to power and prominence, but it, he actually helped the Orthodox Church at that time that kind of suppressed the uh, reverence towards icons uh, and the iconophiles. So he helped, you know, I, I would say oppress <laughs> that group of people and so rose to power. Now here again, you have a lot of different areas you could move into. Ephesus would be one that I would try to take out as soon as possible. You're very powerful. You've got a large army, You've got a decent amount of prestige money. Well, gold's not much there. Here, if you can start moving north and south and just conquer some of your neighbors, you're going to come to a position of power really quickly internally and maybe even look at um, usurping the Roman throne for yourself. Now, moving next door, we are looking at Callistos II of Anatolikon of the Melisenos family. Now, Melisenos family is another one of those old, highly respected noble families. And it's really interesting. They kind of came about in the 8th century. And many family branches still continue today. There were famous generals in Imperial Russia that came from this family, as well as some Dutch academics that <laughs> hailed from this family. So this is a very old family that still exists today. Now, they were governors of all of Asia Minor during the period of the Roman Empire here. And they supported the rise of the Comenians. Now, one of the descendants of the Milicenos actually became Patriarch Gregory III, so the head of the Orthodox Church. Now, what can you do? You can move in a lot of different directions. I would try to conquer as many of your smaller neighbors as quickly as possible before you challenge the more powerful Lacano, Lacano Dracon family off to the west. Your expansion to the east should be your main target here, but don't forget you are sharing a border with the Abbasids. So if a war does break out between the Roman Empire and the Abbasid Caliphate, you're going to be right there on that frontier. Now we move just to the south to a relatively small county. And this is Count Leon of Seleucia of the Phocas family. And Phocas, this is a very important family, historically speaking. They rose to power in the 10th century, mainly once again through military conquests and being powerful generals. 
they actually had an emperor that rose to power, Nikephoros II, who ruled from 963 to 969. Now, they led rebellions after Nikephoros was murdered against Basil II until Basil II finally crushed them. Their line ended in the 11th century, but one of their descendants on the female side actually married the Holy Roman Emperor, Otto II. So can you recreate the power base here as Focas? Well, one of the thing is you have a pretty good amount of prestige already. Uh, you've got a very small army and no gold. It's a difficult start, but you could try to see if you can maneuver in a way that you have some marriages, you can get remarried. You're only 37, so you can add more and conquer some of the territories next to you. I would look at either Nicosia as a possible target. They're the lowest hanging fruit for you, as well as the guys right here in, let's see if I can pronounce it, um, Kibiraitoyai. Tot totally nailed that pronunciation. So that's one opportunity here. Build your power base here before you start looking at conquering the rest of Asia Minor. And here too, if there's a war with the Abbasids, now you can conquer some territory pretty quickly or you could absolutely be get destroyed. So this is a difficult start, but a really intriguing one historically. Now I had mentioned Armenia quite often and now we're going to the, uh, the county or the duchy, I guess, of Armeniac. And here we have the... Korkuas family in Ioannis, Armeniac. Now, they were our, an Armenian noble family that moved into the region. They actually tried to launch a coup against Basil I, which no doubt it failed, and they were subsequently banished. So the question here is, can you change that? Now, your army's okay. You've got no claims. You're almost okay. I don't. I reloaded this, and these these attributes change every time because you definitely want more than diplomacy zero for this character. But you have some neighbors whose military is inferior to yours that you can look at trying to conquer internally. Once a war does get declared with external forces, become involved as much as possible. Raid and sack and loot and bring in cash. That is one key component. If you are a vassal of the Roman Empire to try to gain money that way. Now we're gonna go to an even smaller and more difficult start and count Leon of Colonia from the Argyros family, another historical family that was founded by this gentleman here, Count Leon. Now they actually lasted until the end of the Roman Empire in 1453, and Romanos III, emperor, came from the Agiros family and ruled from 1028 until 1034. Now you have a very, very difficult start because first thing you need to do is overthrow your liege, which will not be easy uh, because his levies outnumber yours. So internal maneuvering will be the key if you want to go with an interesting historical character, an interesting historical family to try to become emperor of Rome. This is the most challenging start of all the ones I'm gonna highlight, but it's interesting because such a small obscure family that was founded by this gentleman here actually rose all the way to the position of emperor, though only one, and lasted all the way until the end in 1453. Now for the final one, we're gonna talk about one of the most interesting ones, and that is the Ducas family here with Count, or Duke, Du, Dukes, uh, Constantinos of Paphlagonia. Now the Ducas, of course, a historical family. In fact, former uh, presidential candidate, Michael Dukakis, is from the Ducas family origin. So they're, they're plentiful, they're around the world became one of the most powerful families in the 9th and 11th century. There were multiple lines of the Ducas family. The first line actually ended in 917, but then it continued through the female line and led to the eventual, which is considered the third Ducas line, the Ducat dynasty that ruled the Roman Empire from 1059 till 1081. And that will be the emperor 
in the 1066 start is from this Dukas family, and that will be the one that I then talk about in that guide. So what can you do if you take over as a Dukas with the goal of kind of recreating that house and establishing it, overthrowing the Macedonian house and becoming the rulers of Rome? Well, you first need to conquer the people around you. I think that's that's a general theme that I've spoken about a few times. Now, one of the areas you could go is all the way up here. But uh, needless to say, the Khazars will be a problem for you eventually because they'll kind of want to consolidate all of their power base and that land. Now, you can also, again, grab money through foreign conquests if, or better said, once the Byzantines go to war with either the Bulgars or the Abbasids. So that's something you can do. But internal growth is the key component here in proper marriages. Now, you do have two children neither one of whom is married at this time. So you can play the marriage game to get some powerful internal alliances, which I would recommend that share a border with your neighbors so you can start conquering internally. So there you have my 867 guide on the Roman Empire or the Byzantine Empire or Byzantium. It's a little shorter because sometimes those really long guides can really drag out. There aren't, there aren't as many, um, let's say, powerful characters in the Byzantine Empire as there were, for instance, in my HRE guide or any of my Britain guides or Viking guides. But there are a few really interesting ones. Now, the first one, like I had already mentioned, you can just become the emperor and try to conquer as much land as possible. I personally always find those kind of starts a little bit mm, boring because you're already at the max power base. Starting as one of the dukes or counts would be a little bit more interesting, especially if you're looking at areas of higher difficulty. Uh, for instance, if you want to isolate yourself on Cyprus, Sicily, or in the Crimean region, those are all very interesting and very difficult starts. Or one of the historical families that I highlighted that eventually had an emperor and replaced in some shape or form an established family like the Macedons who are ruling at this time, that is of course one way you could go as well. Let me know down in the comments if you have started in 867 either as the emperor himself or as any of the other characters I mentioned or didn't mention here in the Roman Empire in 867. I'd love to hear your story. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy and I will talk to you soon. Bye.